Amen. Good morning, church. For those that are here present, those watching, it's a good day to be together in God's house in our own homes to be about worship. And as we begin, my name is David Husseltine, the pastor of Franklin Community Church, and have a few announcements to share. For those here in person after the service is over, you're invited to Cyril's Hall, where Jan Francis has prepared a nice coffee fellowship, but also will be preparing meal kits for Cass. So again, we do this periodically. I know many of us here have been a part of that. So uh, many hands make like work. So as many of us can come and help, we'll get those bags filled and uh, there'll be a blessing to those in need down in Detroit. This coming Tuesday is Flag Day. And kind of in recognition of Flag Day, the Boy Scouts are gonna help retire our tattered American flag that's on our flagpole. So they're gonna de decommission it. They'll put a new flag up there and we're invited to come and be a part of that. So if you're free this Saturday at, or Tuesday at 6 o'clock, come and join uh, the Scouts as we change out our flags. At the end of the month, there's going to be a celebration for Charles Boyu. He's been our district superintendent for the last seven years, I think, seven years. And he's been here at the church, leading our church conferences, both in person and via Zoom. So he's ending his tenure as a superintendent. He'll be going to Birmingham first as the pastor there. But as a district, we want to celebrate his years of service with us. So if you would like to come out and be a part of that celebration, it's going to happen on uh, June 30th at 7 o'clock at Troy Korean United Methodist Church. So to come out and be a part of that, in fact, Diana Gowdy, she's on the leadership team kind of planning this event. So come on out and support Diana and Charles. So if you are planning on coming, there is an RSV to Diana, so she knows you're coming. Or they are taking a love gift. So again, if you want to make a love gift in honor of uh, Charles, you can talk to Diana and she can tell you how to do that. So that's coming up on June 30th. Well, on July 1st, there will be a new pastor coming to this church, and John Pohl will be serving both this church as well as, well as Waterford Trinity. And both churches were having worship times about 10, 1030, so there had to be adjustments. So many of you received an email this past week, actually on Saturday, from uh, Adam Rourke, our staff parish chair. And a decision has been made to move the worship here at Franklin at 9, and then the worship services out at Waterford at 11. 
this nine o'clock. I know it's earlier, but uh, for a lot of young families with children that are involved in sports, it's an ideal time for them to worship and be able to be available to participate in those sporting activities. So I know adjustments will have to be made and sometimes it's not always easy, but again, as Adam said, we're gonna live with this for a while and see what works best. So that will happen on July 3rd, will be the first time worship will be at nine o'clock here at the sanctuary. And the last announcement is celebration. And as our own Lucy Sabal has a birthday today, so we're celebrating with Lucy. So after the service, come up and give her a hug and wish her happy birthday. We won't uh, tell folks how old you are, Lucy, but uh, we're glad you're here with us today. Amen. Well, those are our announcements for this morning, and I invite you to stand if we're able. And our, our new liturgist, Kathleen Burpee, will lead us in our call to worship. We're glad to have Kathleen on our team now. Kathleen. Okay. The Spirit blows life through us all. We gather in the renewing life the Spirit gives to us. Let us then worship with great joy and celebrate the new life among us. We bring chase and joy, joy and laughter before God. Let the world hear our praises. And our first hymn is Sweet, Sweet Spirit, number 334. For, please be seated. It's time for our children's time. So, Tiffany, you want to come up with Pastor David? Just the two of us this morning. I like your hat today. That's very nice. So, how you doing today? Okay. So, I got my bag. I want to show you something. It's a picture from a movie you might have seen. It's an old movie, but you might have watched it on Disney. And it's a picture right here. You know what it's an outline of? A little character. No, it's a baby. Well, it looks like Baby Yoda, but it's a character named Stitch. Lilo and Stitch. Oh, I watched that. You watched that. Well, Lilo and Stitch, they have this word, Ohana, and it comes from Hawaii. And my message today is this is an important word because it means Ohana means family. So in Hawaii, they have this spirit that we're all family, we're all cousins. And I like that concept. And I think that's one that we all should embrace, that we're all family. We're all ohana. So we look different. We live in different places. But through God, we're all one family. So hopefully you remember that, Tiffany. Ohana means family. Now there's another Hawaiian word that is important today, and that word is aloha. Can you say that? Aloha. Aloha. Oh, aloha. The congregation say it. Aloha. Aloha. And aloha is another Hawaiian word, and that means hello. You greet people by saying aloha, but also it's a form of saying goodbye. When someone's leaving, someone's departing you, you say aloha. Well, to me, today is aloha day, because today's my last day as a pastor here at this church on Sunday morning. So I'm going to be saying aloha to you and everybody, and with that, goodbye is a blessing that God will care for us, 
that we're all Hana, we're all part of the same family, so we're all connected, but we come and go. So I've come to this church for a few years, but now I go to another church. In a couple of weeks, you'll have a new pastor up here doing these children's messages. And you'll get to know him, and I think you'll like Pastor Paul. But Ohana family and aloha. So long and goodbye. So that's my words for you and for all of us, children of God. So let's say a prayer, and then Dr. Althea's here, so she'll take you to Children's Church. So let's say a prayer. So thank you, God, thank you. for this day. We thank you that we're all family. And we thank you for this ministry of the church. Amen. Well, aloha, Tiffany. And there's... And if you will all rise for the hymn of meditation, Spirit of the Living God, on number 393. <laughs> I have an interesting or short prayer for today as we start out the prayers of the people and then we will have silent meditation and then we will recite the Lord's Prayer. Just for today, help me, God, to remember that my life is a gift, that my health is a blessing, that this new day is filled with awesome potential, that I have the capacity to bring something wholly new and unique and good into this world. Just for today, help me, God, to remember to be kind and patient to the people who love me and to those who work with me. Teach me to see all the beauty that I so often ignore and listen to the silent longing of my own soul. Just for today, help me, God, to remember you. Now we'll have a few moments of silent meditation and then the Lord's Prayer. Let us recite the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, as we worship together, we think about all of our blessings, and we respond to those blessings by giving an offering, giving a gift to the church. So as part of a worship service, we have a time for offering, and rather than passing the plates, we do have the offering plates by the doors for those who are here in person. But for those watching at home, we can also give to the church electronically through our giving portal or send a check in the mail. But again, it's never required of us to give, but we give out of gratitude, out of thankfulness. 
And in our giving, we are strengthened in our faith. So when we do pray, when we do give, we pray, O oh Lord, that you will bless these gifts and we who give them, that together they will be used to continue your good work of ministry here in this village of Franklin and beyond. As we pray this all in Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now let us stand as we sing together our doxology.
Our scripture reading this morning is from Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14. Pressing toward the goal. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed in me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of the scripture. Thanks be to God. And our um, sermon will be uh, performed by uh, David Hesseltine, our pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. And it's great to have Kathleen and John last week as new liturgists, and I know Pam has signed up, so it's good to have new voices. And again, there's always opportunities for folks. If you want to be a part of our liturgists uh, group, talk to Kay Duncan, and we'll get you on the calendar. But let's pause in a moment of prayer. And now, O Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation the spirit of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, on Sunday, July 3rd, 2016, I preached my first sermon here at Franklin Church. Six years later, I'm preaching my last message. Now, looking back at my preaching schedule that summer, I saw that the Olympics took place in August. And in recognition of the Olympics, I did a sermon series on some lessons that could be learned and gained from the summer games. Now, one of the messages I preached was titled, Run the Race using Hebrews 12.1, and let us run the race God has set before us as the inspiration, I spoke of how we continue, you and I, the race of our ancestors, that we carry on the legacy of all the members of Franklin Community Church, and man, there have been a lot of members of this church over the years. In fact, this August will be our 182nd anniversary of the church, 182 years. So friends, just imagine all the people that have been members and constituents of this church. Now, using a relay race as an analogy, I suggested that the baton has been passed off to us to run the race here in Franklin Village. So friends, over these past six years, we've done some wonderful things. We worship together. We've fellowshiped together. We've studied together. We've served together. Lives have been positively impacted in and through this church. So I believe that cloud of witnesses that's talked about there in Hebrews 12, they're rooting for us. And I think they're proud of what we've been able to do in ministry and mission over these past few years. But speaking of these past few years, though, when I arrived here in 2016, if someone had told me that this strange little thing that we picture like a, a fuzzy ball with antenna, that we call COVID-19. If someone told me in 2016 that this disease would cause a pandemic, a global pandemic, that church services and everything else in the church would halt for a period of time, and even after two years, we're still not back to normal, I would have said, you're crazy. There's no way nothing like that could ever happen. Well, it did. That's been our reality. But like every other church, we've had to figure out how to be a church in a pandemic. So we learned about Zoom, right, and other ways to communicate online. We figured out how to stream our services and record those services. Now, I'm the first one to admit that there's been some glitches along the way. It wasn't always smooth. And again, mistakes were made. And some Sundays, we just were not able to have our service online. But as we continued and gradually worshiped together, we got better even learn new applications for our video mixer. So this morning I need to thank Diana Gowdy for her creativity, for her time, for her passion. It's done all that work to make our services visually impactful. But I also wanna thank Zari Catherine. Now we got Zari to be our nursery worker and she was doing a good job as our nursery worker but then the COVID hit and we stopped meeting in person 
But we called Zari up and said, hey, would you be willing to help us out up in the audiovisual area? And she said, sure, I'll be willing to do that. So she's been a great help. In fact, she's a great asset to our church. And being a young person, if there's a glitch that comes up in our computers, she doesn't freak out. Calmly, she tries to figure out a solution. So again, we want to thank Diana and Zari, and also Bob Gowdy and uh, Nick Tonkin have also stepped up from time to time to help up there in the AV booth. So let's give them a round of applause. Let's turn around and look at them up. Let's turn around, they're up there. Let's give them word. They've done an awesome job, awesome job. Now, besides worshiping, we've also learned to fellowship together via Zoom. We had lots of meetings on Zoom. I know many of us are tired of Zoom, but that's our reality. And even the WSCS got on board and had some of their meetings via Zoom. And early on in the pandemic, we even had a trivia night via Zoom. Now, we also learned to study together, again, online. So we've had Bible studies online. Althea and I have led, and I remember... Uh, Diana Gowdy led the BIBLE class, and it was a large group. We had over 20 participants in that particular Bible study. In fact, we had participants from our church who were in Florida and Georgia, but still participated. So COVID did not shut down our studying together, and certainly COVID didn't shut down our serving together. Marta and her team has consistently been at it, helping provide food and other things for the needy, in fact, even when we were in our homes during COVID, we had set out wagons and boxes in our neighborhoods for people to con contribute to CAS. And then we got involved with these meal kits. We've been doing that for several years. So again, our mission committee has been serving and serving and serving even despite COVID-19. And then through missions, we had our Adventee. The women have come together even by a Zoom and have continued their generous support of CAS raising over $10,000 each year over the last couple years. So again, things have been different, right? We've been doing things differently, but it's still been vital ministry, and that's what's very important. So we're still worshiping, we're still fellowshipping, we're still studying and serving together, and I believe those cloud of witnesses that are again watching over us, they're rooting for us and are proud, right? Proud of all the things we've been able to do. Now it's not how they did it, it's a little differently, but still we're doing these important parts of ministry. Now I think being able to worship online has been a very important tool that we have. It's helped people stay connected, right, to the church and worship even though they're not able to get out of the house. And there's some people who've discovered that that's how they like to worship. Rather than coming out in person, they want to be at home at their own time, own schedule, and watch the worship experience. So we and other churches have experienced, even though we've come back in person, the numbers are not what they used to be. Now there's still some folks I know from our own church, they're still not comfortable coming together because of COVID, so they're still at home. But again, there are, I know other people that that's their preferred way of worshiping, right? At home, there in their living rooms. So friends, I believe the new normal will be smaller worship services, fewer people in worship, now, does that mean the vitality of our church is diminished because we don't have as many people in our sanctuary as before? I don't think so. We can still be a vital church. There just won't be as many bodies in our sanctuary as there was before. Thus, as the saints of Franklin Church are looking upon us right now, they look and see fewer people in this worship space, certainly fewer than back in the day. But they can also recognize, again, vital ministry, life-changing ministry continues, even though things have changed. In fact, the diminishing of worship, not just here at other churches, that's not just a COVID thing. COVID accelerated, but even before COVID, the numbers were steadily declining. Because we know that religion in general and church participation specifically has been in decline in this country over the years. So friends, we're not alone in that our numbers are shrinking. Does that mean that we're failing our ancestors? Are we failing our leg of the race? I don't think so. Again, we're doing the best we can to be a vital church given the realities of their, this day. So we're still worshiping. Again, we're still fellowshipping. We're still serving and studying. 
It will just be in a different format. Now, one of the differences, as you know, going forward, is that Franklin Community Church will be sharing a pastor. That will be sharing a pastor with another church. And the leadership of the church believes that the savings of sharing a pastor will be able to put into ministries in our community, finding ways to reach out, right, to those people that are living around us. Now, what those new ministries will look like? Well, those will be decided upon the leadership of this church. In fact, a team has been recruited right now to participate in something called the R3 process. The R3 process. You'll be hearing a lot about this as we go forward. The three R's stand for reflection, reimagination, and re-engage. So working with a coach, they'll meet to discern the vitality and potential of the church, the vision for ministry and mission in the context of our community, and then guide the congregation to connect with our community. Now, I believe this is a useful process. In fact, we began just this past week meeting with David Nilhaus. He's going to be the coach. He's the pastor at Dearborn First United Methodist Church. So we've begun the process. And this coming week, the team will meet again with David. But then they'll put a pause on the process, wait for Pastor Pohl to come in and get acclimated to the community and church. And then in the fall, pick up the process and complete the visioning for the church. Now, I trust everyone here and at home will get behind the recommendations from this process. And you all will be looking forward in anticipation to the good things that are ahead for Franklin Community Church. Now, as part of those good things that's going to happen is Pastor John. Now, the analogy of a relay race is also true for pastors serving churches, that we come to the church, we take the baton from our predecessor, we're here for so many years, and then we pass on that baton to the next pastor. In fact, I looked at the history of Franklin Community Church, and I counted up all the pastors that have served this congregation since 1840, and I'm the 75th pastor who has served this congregation over those years. So quite a legacy. So when I came here, I received the baton from Pastor Lynn Hazley, and Pastor John Pohl will be following me. So just as you're looking forward to what lies ahead, so I'm looking forward to what lies ahead of me there in Redford. So I've appreciated being your pastor. And for those that gathered at the reception, I really appreciate the reception that was held and the generous gift that was given to me. As I shared with the people there, one of the joys of ministry is getting to know the people of the congregation and being part of the lives of the congregation. To be there in the good times, during the celebrations, and also to be there in those difficult moments. I looked in my book and I saw that over these six years I officiated at 16 weddings here in this sanctuary, but I also led the funeral memorial services for 35 folks, 35 saints over the years that have passed on. So those 35 people are now included in that cloud of witnesses that are watching over us right now. And though a number of those services were people that were dear to me in this church, there's one particular person that I want to lift up today, and that is George Ringstad. Now, George died the week of his 100th birthday. Almost got there, but not quite. What was remarkable about George, in his 99th year, he was attending worship services. He was attending trustee meetings. He was helping set up communion what a legacy, what a model for us. And I hope as we think about George, we can be inspired because he did what he could to serve the church and trusted in God to the very end, right? So he was 99 years old. He was still doing that, still running his leg of the race. So as we think about George and the other saints, I hope we're motivated, inspired, right, to do what we can as we carry on our part of the race until George was called home and we too will be called home. So it's George and all the other members of this church that I will remember as I move forward. So I've done the best I can to faithfully serve this congregation and together we've done good things. So for me and for you, the race is not over. There's still much worshiping, fellowshipping, studying and serving to do. 
we will press on, as Paul writes, we will press on to that award. For me, it will be a Redford, and in Detroit, it will be you serving with Pastor John. And I know that we'll do our best. You and I will do our best until the time comes when we receive our heavenly prize. So thanks be to God for sustaining us. And like I said, I appreciate this time I've been here together with you as members of this church. As most of you know, there's been some stressful times over these last few years. And I don't leave here angry or bitter, but I do want to close with a few personal remarks that the past two years have been extremely stressful, that Carol and I have been recipients of sometimes unkind words spoken and letters written without people knowing all the facts. And unfortunately, as a result, my health and Carol's health has been compromised. So in some ways, we feel, especially in those times, that the church failed us. But however, looking forward, I'll be moving on to Redford Aldersgate, and you'll be here with Pastor John, doing the best we can. So I'm ready to fly, and I know you're ready to fly and take off to new heights, even new things here and in Redford. So friends, so long, and God bless. Let us pray. Oh, grace of the Lord, we are in a race. We've taken that baton, and who, thousands of people have been part of this congregation, and we're just a little portion of that legacy. And I've done the best I can, we've done the best that we can during this difficult time. But now we move forward with new worship times, a new pastor. Things might be unsettled for a while, but we trust, trust in your grace that you will guide us and be with us in the race, just like George Ringstadt, until the time comes when we finish that line and we join you in your kingdom. So thanks be to God for life, for opportunity, for ministry. Amen. Now I invite us to stand and sing together this forward through the ages, number 555.
now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the love and knowledge of God and of his Son, Jesus the Christ. And may the grace of God Almighty be with us and sustain us this day and every day. Amen and aloha. Thank you.